Pro Boxing fans here with former world title uh, challenger, Mr. Huey Fury. We're here at uh, Manchester, well, a hotel in Manchester Airport. You're heading off to Saudi Arabia very shortly, under, I understand, for your fight with Samuel Peter. Uh, when do you actually fly? Uh, fly today. So probably, I think, about four o'clock. First time in Saudi? First time in Saudi. What are you expecting from this Saudi Arabian experience? Um, not your typical place that, although we are getting more and more boxing there, I think more money is being piled in over there on the boxing. Um, but yeah, what are you expecting from this Saudi Arabian experience? Um, to be honest, we don't know what to expect uh, until we get there. So I'm just looking forward to it and uh, enjoying every minute of it. What kind of a, a setup have you arranged over there? Are there many boxing gyms to choose from? Like I say, we, we don't really need it. All our hard work is done back here. So you probably just take over now until the fight. Um, Samuel Peter uh, is a big old lump, great experience. He's been tested at world level, former world champion, um, but arguably over the hill. What are the keys going to be to beating him? And are you motivated for this fight? Listen, I don't underestimate any fighter. I suppose Pels are heard he's in tremendous shape, in tremendous shape and he's uh, come for a fight. So it's going to be uh, it's going to be interesting. But listen, like I say to you, I'm just going to need to do my job of concentrating what we've been doing in the gym and uh, like you say, we're just going to take take the fight and as it comes. From the outside, it feels like a bit of a keep busy fight. Um, and just going back to that motivation, um, is this a fight that's got sort of um, got the blood flowing or is this is this sort of going through the motions? And how important is it to make sure that this opponent isn't overlooked? It's not a keep busy fight. At the end of the day, we try to get there. Um, it was all last minute and we uh, try to get other opponents, but uh, fair play to Sammy Peters, he was on when we took it. Um, you mentioned there are a couple of opponents that you went for. Um, I heard Travis Kaufman was in the mix. Uh, was it too soon after in, in injury? Um, who else were you interested in fighting? Like I say, I don't get involved in uh, things like that. But like I say, whoever whoever's willing to fight, I'll fight anyone. So I think they offered probably not enough everyone. Um, you're, you're a fighter with tremendous uh, boxing IQ. Um, you're known for your defensive skills. Um, one criticism that's been levied at you in the past is your um, offense maybe not throwing enough punches. Um, maybe not of showing that aggressive nature that translates well to the television. Um, do you listen to that kind of noise? Do you feel you need to be start making statements? Um, it's not for the fact, as like I say, it's all running in the cubs, but uh, I'm ready now and uh, you can see a big difference. We've obviously been working a lot in the gym on different uh, prospect things. So uh, on the 12th of July, you can see a big improvement again. I uh, just want a quick reflection on some of, the, of your career so far, um, in particular those two defeats to Pulev. Um, and Joseph Parker. Talk to me a little bit about the Pulev fight first. Um, obviously, you suffered the cut. I mean, how did, um, ha what's your sort of reflection on that fight? So when we took that fight, um, we've, we've cut over the high and obviously uh, went over there. And um, not many people would have went over there with a cut, they would have pulled out. But we went over there, took the fight, and just what it is, fighting with one eye. So one of them, you can't really uh, go with it. It's done, it's history, but. Um, it's one of them's experience, but take all that away from it. It was just a bit of bad luck. And with the Joseph Parker fight, I believe I was world champion there. I should have been due to politics and bad luck. It's one of them. You just got to get on with it. I always put my head down and uh, get, but I don't deserve, I don't get the credit I deserve. Like, anyway, I went over there with one eye, took poor left the uh, distance. But look of uh, Joshua. He, he went seven rounds with Louise the other day and got beat in the fashion. So if you put that to that, it's not the same platform, is it? But um, it's one of them. I just get on with it. I don't really say much. Put me hard work in the gym. And now I'm just looking forward to this fight and getting on. I do believe I'm up there in the top five in the world. Um, get this out of the way and I'm coming for all them fighters. Uh, defeats can affect fighters in different ways. Um, a lot of the great champions in the past have been beaten and have come back to capture glory. Um, others it hasn't quite worked out for. What have you kind of learned from that defeat? How, how the defeats change your mentality? Has anything changed at all? Listen, a lot's changed. Like anything, you've got to adapt. In this game, it's always you learn something new every day in boxing. And it's always learning, especially me doing so, so much so young. And uh, I've come on a lot. And this fight now, I'm just, I've had all my learning curves now. It's all done, it's all dusted. So there's no there's no luck or anything part of it. I'm just going on to get with it, get on with it. And I'm just looking forward to the journey ahead. So moving on to uh, elsewhere in the heavyweight scene, 
uh, AJ versus Andrew Rees. Obviously, AJ upset uh, the fast hands of Andrew Rees um, catching AJ. And what did you ma- what did you make of the manner of that defeat? Um, the manner of that defeat, like I say, he fought the wrong fight. Uh, Joshua did. He come he come basically he come box his way out of it. So he just come forward in a straight line and try to um, bang him out there. But he come unstuck. Like Andrew Rees can fight, and he's one of them. He's a short man and he's coming forward and he can take a shot. So it's going to it's gonna do you in. Do you think AJ could benefit from an interim fight before jumping back in there? Or would you jump back straight back in and try and um, uh, yeah, um, offset that loss? Yeah, he's got he's got to do. He can't see any other way. He's got to uh, come back to that loss because otherwise what's going to take another fight? It doesn't make sense, does it? He's got to come back and... Uh, Thing I lost, but I can see the same thing happen again because I think Andy Ruiz got beaten. Um, Dillian White versus Oscar Rivas, um, both undefeated fight. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Rivas and undefeated Colombian coming over. A little bit of an unknown quantity. I haven't seen a huge amount of him. Um, how do you see that fight playing out? Uh, it's a very good fight, so you got to give the hats off to uh, Dillian White for taking that fight. Um, so yeah, I'm not really seeing much of him myself, but I've heard he's a very good fighter. So looking forward to seeing it. Dave Allen, David Price. Um, how do you see this one turning out? I mean, both. I mean, ha, ha, where, where do you see these guys? Do you see them as domestic? Do you th- see them as potential world level fighters? I don't really see much of the world um, title like st- stage, but uh, it's a good British fight. Um, it's what it is. It's like anything. It's if Dave Allen sticks in and uh, keeps walking him down, they, uh, David Price always has a habit of fading in the middle to late round. So. You don't know. Oh, David Price could knock him out because he's got a big punch. So it's like I say, 50 50. Uh, and finally, Huey, all being well, you come through Samuel Peter out in uh, Saudi Arabia in a couple of weeks' time. Which route are you looking to take? Who is it that you're targeting as a, your next world title shot? It doesn't matter to me who it is. We're willing to fight anyone. Huey, very good luck out in Saudi Arabia. And thank you for speaking to Pro Boxing fans. No